Canadian Interiors, your broadcasting from Canada. My name is Sandra Asante, and today we'll be talking more of Ethiopia's um, ethno nationalism, the need, whether it's less or more. I'll take a break of back. You're welcome back. So the TPLF, not the Abbey government and its allies, is responsible for the ongoing conflict in Ethiopia. On November 29 last year, Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed announced the end of administration's military offensive against the Tigray People's Liberation Front in the country's northern Tigray region. This announcement has since proved premature. Tigray's conflict and the consequent humanitarian crisis continue to this day. The TPLF, an ethno-nationalist front that dominated Ethiopian coalition politics for almost three decades before Abiy's rise to power, was responsible for the onset of the conflict that is devastating the region. The conflict started in the early November when the TPLF launched a sudden coordinate, coordinated attack on the northern command centers of the Ethiopian National Defense Force across Tigray. In response, the federal government immediately declared a national emergency and launched an extensive control offensive with the help of the militia and the police forces from the neighboring regions of Afa and Amhara, the ENDF swiftly pushed the TPLF forces back and gained control of Tigray and its capital, Makali, in a matter of weeks. The TPLF, however, refused to accept defeat and vowed to continue on fighting. Fighters loyal to the group are still engaged in guerrilla welfare against the federal government. The ongoing conflict has held a heavy human cost. Forces loyal to the TPLF as well as the ENDF and its regional allies have been accused of causing an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. Civilians have been killed and many forced to flee their homes and seek shelter in neighboring regions and countries. Hundreds of cases of sexual violence have also been recorded and citizens in Tigray are still struggling to access clean food and water, according to the United Nations. The TPLF guerrilla fighters have also attacked air convoys and road infrastructures which worsen the humanitarian situation in the region. While the conflict has had a devastating impact on all Ethiopians, may believe the military and true offensives conducted by the federal government with the help of forces from neighboring regions were justified. Indeed, had the government not responded to the TPLF attack with forces, the consequences would have been a lot worse for the country. The TPLF victory against the federal army in Tigray could have triggered an endless bloody civil war across Ethiopia and marked the beginning of the country's disintegration. The federal government and neighboring regional states had no option other than to do everything they can do to stop the TPLF aggression in the Tigray before it spilled over to other parts of the country. Despite this, some accused the Amara and Afar states of supporting the federal effort to contain the TPLF solely due to their ethnic animosity against the group. As the conflict started with aggression by the TPLF against the Ethiopian National Army, which is tasked with protecting all Ethiopians and not any specific ethnic group, these accusations are baseless. Nevertheless, it is also impossible to deny that Amaras and the Afars has suffered immense discrimination and abuse under the rule of the TPLF for decades and have every reason to be fearful of the group and its attempt to regain control of the country. To understand how Ethiopia ended up where it is today, and why the administration of Tigray's neighboring state did not hesitate 
to help Abe's government defeat the TPLF. We need to look at the country's recent past, launched as the fledgling fighting group in the 1970s. The TPLF led a movement that came to power in 1991 after overthrowing the communist government of Mekhishtu Haile Mariam. It established a multiple ethnic governing coalition that was dominated by ethnic Tibetans. The ethnic federal arrangement that the TPLF established and led for nearly three decades resulted in unprecedented levels of instability, ethnic violence, displacement and countless massacres across the country. To leave this devastating conflict behind and get back to the path of progress and reform, Ethiopia undoubtedly need to embark on a national reconciliation project. Hopefully, the upcoming national election in June concludes peacefully and gives birth to such a needed framework. Recent atrocities that targeted civilians should also be documented and those responsible brought to justice. But even before that, what the country really needs is a strong federal government that proactively work to ensure all Ethiopians from the ethnic groups feel safe and secure in their own country. The Amara, like others who suffered immensely under the TPLF's ethno-nationalist regime, also want a federal government that not only condemns the many atrocities they have suffered over the years, but also takes action to prevent their reputation. Thank you so much for joining me. This is where I am. Editorials. My name is Sandra Asante.